but uh, yeah, you don't do it because you're going to get rich at it. Nice. So uh, my name's Alan, uh, I'm the co-owner of Aquarius Records in San Francisco. Uh, this is a record store that's been here, um, I've been around since 1970. Uh, one thing led to another and we ended up um, taking over the store from the previous owner. And so it's been through different owners over the years, um, but it's sort of been a fixture in San Francisco. And I think we're one of the, um, you know, the, the oldest sort of independent record store in the city. The record store is, on some levels, one of the best jobs I can imagine having. The people are cool, the managers are cool, there's definitely a sense of camaraderie. I think running a record store now is, is definitely a tough business. Um, it seems like you have to, have to have something that sets you apart. My name is Dick Vivian and I'm at Rookie Ricardo's Records on Haight Street. I sell vinyl, I sell 45s albums, predominantly soul, rock, and oldies. Well, I'm kind of you know, at the table, I have a lot of friends always come in and eat. I mean, I'm kind of like a little community clubhouse. I feel like there's definitely still a place for record stores in the world. I feel like it's changed a lot over the last 10 or 15 years as the means of distribution has changed, especially electronically, people being able to download whether for free or paid to, you know, directly to artists or to other websites. The neat thing about record stores now, it doesn't have to be the collectible stuff. It doesn't have to be the obscure, I don't do punk, I don't do international, I don't do exotica, I don't do reggae. Like, and I have a friend now buying rock records because that's not my strong suit. And he single-handedly has doubled my business. That's the girl what you wanted to be. And um, selling the type of music that we do, which is generally like stuff that's a little bit outside the mainstream. We have, you know, all kinds of different types of music, but there's a lot of indie rock and experimental drone music and metal and, you know, weird psychedelic reissues and all kinds of things. Particularly with a store like ours, where really it's about having a lot of, of uh, stuff you couldn't find other places that easily. I always tell people, get a specialty. If you try to do a little bit of everything, there's already Amoeba. They do everything. Don't do CDs because there's no markup. A used record shop is the way to go because you, you can mark it up. You pay a couple of bucks for a record, sell it for 10 for the convenience of the people. And, but if you, if, you, if you try to be a store like Amoeba, it's like you'll, you'll fail. It's sort of interesting for us because we do both the, the mail order sales um, and we of course have a you know brick and mortar store where we're selling stuff um, in the shop. We've been doing mail order since, uh, since pretty much when I started working here and um, so we have a website that has like thousands upon thousands of reviews and so yeah we get a lot of the businesses is through the mail order. Catering to sort of people who aren't in your area but who want that specific stuff that you carry, then that's, that's incredible. You, you double your, your income in that way. The other real key to having a successful record shop is you have an, a whole bunch of listening stations because people want to try it out. That way I don't have returns, I don't have to guarantee anything, they get to play whatever they want, and if they don't like the way it sounds, they don't buy it. What we do is we write about the music and have um, an email list that goes out and a website with our reviews on it and uh, sound samples and everything. And in the store, we've got tags that we 
uh, we you know, print up with our reviews on almost, you know, most of the stuff that we have. In the and I think one thing too, it's very important to both bands and to the record stores is uh, doing in-stores, in-store performances with bands. Really great way to um, help to bring in people to the store who maybe wouldn't necessarily come in otherwise, bands, uh, friends and fans and stuff like that. Um, and it's especially, I think, helpful for the bands because a lot of times they're coming into a store and maybe they're playing to, you know, 30 or 50 of their friends, but there's also 20 or 30 people who wouldn't have heard of them or seen them otherwise who get a chance to do that. We're going to be around for a while. We've been around for over 40 years, so I think we've got a few more years left in us, but there'll be changes. And um, like I said, there's all these new stores opening up, and I'm sure some of them will be around for a while too, and some won't. Um, I think there's always going to be people who want the physical, you know, hard copy of the record they like, um, whether it's going to be a CD or an LP or whatever. I don't want all my music just to be, you know, on my hard drive. One thing I don't like is when someone comes in and they ask for one record, 145. This is a golden opportunity to discover. And you're not going to discover if you don't listen.